Welcome back to the channel and today I'm gonna be trying to replicate this very strange mechanism that I found on a channel called the art of rendering This is a channel that I've actually found other mechanisms on that I've tried to recreate in scrap mechanic as well But uh, this one is probably one of the more complex ones and I'm also not sure Why it exists? I mean, I guess the most obvious application I can think of is it's an automatic stamping mechanism where when it goes down down, it stamps some type of ink and when it goes up to the left it like reapplies ink off of some you know ink dispensing pad or something where it can just keep reapplying um, a fresh fresh coat of ink now this is not gonna be an easy thing to build just looking at how many joints there are in this thing and I have no idea how precise the measurements of these joints have to be to get this type of functionality I mean there's this triangle frame here that is kind of holding everything in position to rotate about it's all powered from this top left uh, point right up here there's just a single rotating uh, servo that is essentially powering the entire thing thing so I'm just going to hope that there's some wiggle room in the dimensions of this because I have zero measurements to go off of and I'm just gonna be kind of eyeballing it not to mention scrap mechanic is not gonna be able to build on the build grid as precise as uh, like all these angles and stuff very well but that's not gonna stop me from trying and see what kind of weird result we end up getting all right so I think I might end up building this thing pretty large and it's hard to know where exactly to start but I'm gonna try to start with the smallest unit which when I'm looking at this thing I'm going to go with this section right here and I'm just gonna say that that is seven we're gonna go one two three four five six seven and that is where we're gonna put our first bearing so then I will go out another six from there so one two three four five six so now we have six on either side of the bearing because it looks like it's in the center of that uh, of that rod there. So then uh, I'll add another one for the end bearing. And then I'm going to need to add another one here. So this should be equal. There should be six blocks in between each bearing. So then from there, we essentially have the exact same thing. Just going in the other direction. But this is going to be offset because of the way that our build system works. And then I'll put the this time I'll put the bearing on the underside. Okay, so now we got to kind of go to a right angle. This is going to be really, really awkward. Um, but we have to go to a right angle, kind of creating a triangle that are connecting these two center joints. So I'm just going to kind of go out from both of these until they end up meeting and hope that this is going to be okay. Is this getting... They're kind of meeting right here. All right, and then I weld that side to that side. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be the right dimensions. I really, really am unsure about this. But let's go with that. Okay, so now from there, uh, it looks like I essentially have, coming from these ends, another right angle going on. So I'm just gonna build out like this all the way out until I hit the center. So now this is the new center point right there. Okay, so now we've got this uh, double triangle system going on. And, oh, it looks like these actually extend, I'm gonna say, uh, I don't even know how, I can't even measure now because we're on a diagonal and this is scrap mechanic and scrap mechanic and diagonals are not very friendly. I know I could be using wedge pieces right now, but for the sake of just keeping the build process simple, I'm just gonna stick to um, building these. Okay, so now how far do I want these to go up? Because these are kind of the key parts right here because these are what connect to the main stamp tool. So here, I'll put uh, one bearing right there. And then this is going to be kind of weird because these are actually going to flex in a way that one of these has to slide inside of a inside of a groove on the stamp tool, which I guess I can kind of build out like the... Uh, I'll build it up. And then I put that pipe there. So now that pipe should essentially slide back and forth on here. I hope that's going to work. Okay, so now everything that I've just built, except for this section right here, should be the kind of off gray tan color thing actually let me paint this up so it matches and i'll have a better idea to follow what i'm even doing okay is this starting to make sense now i hope this is starting to make sense okay so now that i've got that portion done um you know what let's just test out the flexing abilities of this or lack thereof and see if this is anywhere on the right track. So I think the easiest way to do that is uh, I'm just gonna attach that to a bearing and be able to control it from the seat. And now I should just be able to kind of drive it and see what kind of movement it does. 
Oh, this is... Is this bad though? Do we, does it need to flex that much? It freezes here. Oh, you know where? why it's freezing? Okay, look at the... Yeah. All right, all right. We got some issues going on. This, see, this is a collision right here, which I guess I could move this block back a little bit. All right, well, so the good news is this doesn't have to be... Able, it's, it's not supposed to cycle all the way around. It's just supposed to flex kind of like this. And by the looks of it, it should go a little bit hyper flexed like this and then go to uh, about there. I don't know if it needs to go more than that. It does look like that uh, this notch here is intended to go about here. Actually, it is intended to go about center. So here, let me is this going to ruin it. Am I going to? Eh. Okay, good. Nothing fell apart. All right, now let's see if that gives me that extra flexibility. Okay, it gave me like a little tiny, little tiny bit of flexibility. This block doesn't need to be here at all, I hope. <sighs> okay. I feel like I'm playing Jenga. Just take one block away and the whole thing's gonna collapse. All right, so now what can I do? I can do that. That is what I can do. All right, I'm just gonna hope that that's good enough and this isn't gonna end up locking up. Worst case scenario, I start over. Okay, so now from this intersection right here, um, I'm going to have to have, this is where the green bars are going to connect to. And then this is kind of awkward because it kind of goes at a very slight angle down in this direction, pretty much from here to like over here. I don't know what the distance of that's gonna be like. Ew, this is This is really sketchy. There's gonna be a reference point. So there's where it starts. I'm gonna end it right here. Ugh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work. So you know, the thing I've learned about linkages like this is that um, the shape of the line, like you don't need straight lines. I can just have this essentially go wherever I want it to go. As long as its first attachment point is here and its next attachment point is there, I just need to link those two things and then make sure this doesn't interfere with any other movement. But it should essentially act the same as if I just have a straight line going from there to there, no matter what shape this path is. So that is where I wanted it to be, and I'm just gonna hope that that's good. So this is kind of like a weird bluish color. Like, I'll just go with that. That's the closest I have. And then I need another bearing because there's a pivot, like there's a joint here. So now this, oh, this is the longest, this is one of the longest ones now. So this has to go from here way up and pretty much be kind of where this is going to be. So here I need to uh, go up and this is going to be past the end of this as well. I'm going to try to make it go right there. All right. There we go. It's a, it's not the straightest, but I I had to kind of curve it a little bit more at the end there. Um, I can delete this now. This is just my guide. Okay, so now this is that long one, and then oh, it kind of it kind of goes. Where does it go? It kind of goes down a little bit, just a little bit. I feel like this is not to scale at all, which is probably gonna ruin everything. You know what? I really don't think I made this long enough. I'm gonna eyeball a little bit more. All right, I'm having it go right here instead. Just a little bit longer. Another bearing right here. We're kind of going in this direction. How far? Here. And then this is actually going to be the primary power point. Pa point of power. No, this doesn't work the way I hooked it up right now. This has to go underneath. Because otherwise, there's going to be a collision here that actually locks it up. Okay, so now if this just rotates, it should just essentially make everything else function. But I have not attached the anchor points yet. We needed to attach it to that triangular base frame. Okay, so here is one hard point to the frame. Um, the next one is over here at this intersection. And then the next one is down right here. As long as they just meet up. See, you know what Scrap Mechanic needs is something like the flex beams in um, Instruments of Destruction. I just want to be able to go from this point to that point. Just click and click and then have a straight line just going from one from A to B. That'd be so nice. All right. There we go. Look at that. Perfectly lined up. Let's just make sure that those are connected. All right, there we go. And then I color it uh, light purple so you can tell what the actual base, oh, that light purple and that uh, blue. No, that blue is totally wrong. I should use this blue instead. Yeah, I'll use this blue instead. This just looks like a jumble. This looks so, what's the opposite of elegant? Chaos, it's just chaotic. Okay, so then here is our base. 
except that the stamp is actually going to go way down below if this actually works. Um, but you know what? Let's just have it. We're going to do a top-down view of this. So our weld is right there, and then the rotation point comes from right here. So that needs to be where the engine goes now. Okay, I think it is ready for its first test. I have measured absolutely nothing and eyeballed 100% of pretty much everything. And uh, let's see how that paid off for me. And here we go. Oh, no way. Is it? Wait, hold on. No, that, that's not a problem. I this, this is just in the way. Here, I just remove that block. Is it? No way. Is this going to work? Wait. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's weird. It's so close. It is really, really close. This is actually surprisingly effective. The only thing that's missing from the motion is that it doesn't extend downwards. It looks downwards, but it doesn't commit. It doesn't like, it doesn't extend anymore. And you know what? Looking at the original animation, it actually does appear that the downwards extension is way less than the sideways extension. So it appears that I generally have the movement right. It's just my measurements were slightly off in a way that I don't follow through any of that downwards motion. I'm surprised at how well it works though. Like I can cycle all the way through. That is the thing I didn't think was going to happen. I thought it was gonna jam up somewhere because the measurements weren't right and like the joints were not gonna flex the right way. But looking at it, I'm, it's just, I'm cycling all the way through from that one rotation point. Like just to confirm, you can see every single bearing is unpowered except that one, uh, which is the yellow one in the original uh, animation. So if there's anything I might estimate that I could change to make this work better, my initial inclination is actually to move this pivot point right here just a little bit farther away. So lengthening these by like a block or two, but by the looks of it, if I do that, the longer ones you can see right here, they get so close that I think they're gonna end up colliding. They're not gonna be able to uh, finish this motion. There's not enough room to extend it. So that would also mean extending the length of these, which would make these joints farther out, which will then change this intersection point, which will then, it'll change every, like, I that would essentially be a whole new rebuild. All right, you know what? Let me try it. I'm gonna save this. <laughs> you can actually see this is, this is my replica here. It looks so bad. I'm gonna save this as is, and then I'm just gonna, now I'm just gonna try to make that modification and see if I don't mess everything up. So this essentially gets entirely deleted and moved, like, another block down, like, right here. Yeah, so now I just got to reconnect all of this stuff. Okay, so now that is the only change I've made, which I think it's going to lock up now because of what I uh, talked about earlier. But let's just see if I have to make any of those. Yeah, there we go. There's the lock up already. Oh, wait, there's more issues than that. Whoa. The slider inside the stamp no longer extend. It, it wants to extend farther than it's letting it. Okay, well, let me try the other thing I was gonna do, which is to extend these ones a little bit longer. I'll go three blocks on either side. Okay, now that I've adjusted, you can see the dark blue, the original color that is unpainted. Oh, this is still not great, unfortunately. Um, so now it seems like I may have extended that center part too far. I went like a couple of blocks here. So maybe if I just reduce this back by one block now, I am actually really seeing what's happening now. I am so surprised that my first try wasn't a catastrophic failure. My first try was functional, but it just wasn't quite up to uh, par with the functionality that it's designed to have. So let's see how this adjustment fares. All right, so all I did was just move that back a block. So let's see now what happens. Ooh, ooh. Wow, that one little adjustment really made a huge difference, didn't it? Okay, moved it back once again. Now what? Now I think we're pretty much back to our old self. I feel like I was on the right track. Like, it had so much more range of motion, but it locked up. Oh, you know what? You know what I think might do it? is actually making the uh, the rotational arm longer. So here, let me try this then. We're gonna move this 
up to here. All right, it's not the most elegant adjustment, but uh, I'm just kind of throwing paint at a wall and hoping that it sticks. Now let's see. <gasps> oh, no, okay. Oh, so much just happened. That was good. And then the bad came right after it. It goes, it, that was the secret to it extending downwards. Maybe I extended it too much because how much does it extend downwards? No, that's like perfect. But then it goes too much in that direction now. How do I make it not go too much in that direction? Maybe if I move this point back a little bit to like here. Let's find out. Goes down. Perfect. And then... No, it still extends too far in that direction. I'm going to move this intersection closer again. Was that a solution? Goes down. Goes forward. Gets locked up. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that there. I feel like I've made so many Frankenstein changes to that thing that it is no longer resembling much of its former self. This is the one that worked fluidly, but the only issue is it didn't go down far enough to create the stamping motion. So a little of a refresher, this is what it looks like. So it just doesn't go down. So I'm just gonna make, w I'm just gonna make one of the changes. Because I changed way too much, I think, for it. Maybe everything else needs to stay the same and the only thing that needs to change is just this location right here. And all I'm gonna do is move it out by a single block. All right, now let's see. Yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That was all that needed to happen. That was the one change. It was so much easier than the original change I tried. Here, let me weld it um, up right now. Okay, so now we should have our stamping mechanism. Let's try it out. There's the stamp, there's the re-ink, there's the stamp. Oh, that looks good, actually. You know, let's put a platform down there to make it look like it's actually doing something. All right, so there's the bottom. All right, and then where does it go over here? Right about there is the maximum. And here it is, up in the left, we have our ink reload station, and then down on the right, we have our stamp application station. So let's see how this looks. So there we go, we uh, reload ink, we stamp it, and then we reload the ink, and then we stamp it. I am noticing one very, very, very slight imperfection, and that is the reloading station. I'm not perfectly aligned with the reloading station. The original design is very, very nicely uh, horizontal. This one, you can see, it has the slightest angle, uh, which is not perfect. But the stamp section, like that, it just goes very, very horizontal, very level. I'm gonna be honest, I'm actually really happy with this result because uh, it works. <laughs> I was really wondering how difficult it was going to be to get something to work like this by just eyeballing all of the joint locations. None of this is measured whatsoever. And you saw what happened when I got things really, really wrong. It just didn't work at all. And somehow my first try was just really, really close to the actual working measurements somehow so if you guys find any other cool mechanisms like this that are actually doable like in a game you know <laughs> you know think about the physics and the parts that the game allows me to work with and uh, go based off of that if you see anything else that you'd like to see uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, what it was called what it be called what I can search for and maybe we'll see it in a future video because I always like building these fun mechanisms. Just sometimes it's hard to find ones that are actually doable. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more stuff where I recreate real life things. You can find that right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrabman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.